<laughs> what is that? <laughs> Freaking long cat? Oh my god. <laughs> this is cursed. Oh. Uh, okay, it is Tuesday, March 29th. We are doing a morning stream on the European servers, and they just came out with a patch. Now, a few days ago, we were told that there would be a patch because they released preview notes for the Catalyst and for break bar changes. However, just skimming this monster, there's a, there's a lot more. There's a lot more. So we're gonna try to pick this apart now, figure out what they did, try to TLDR this after we've read it, and uh, try to explain the reasoning behind their changes if possible. Okay, first up, Super Adventure Festival. Moda's world-renowned Super Adventure Box returns again when the Super Adventure Festival kicks off March 29th. That's today. Explore two worlds of excitement, peril, and educational entertainment to earn holographic weapons and a variety of loot. Travelers can visit the Adventure Box in Ratasum. Temporary portals have been placed in every major city to facilitate easy travel to the scenic hub of a certain culture. Festivities begin March 29th and continue on April 19th at noon Pacific. Complete the festival's meta achievement annual Super Adventure Box Nostalgia to earn the Reality Rig Mark I chest armor. Last year reward, the Mini Super Ooze, is now available from the traders, the merchants. Once you've got the MK1 in hand, you could talk to the Super Adventure Box traders, upgrade it with Bobble Bubbles. Uh, he's, Chip says he will be not touching Super Adventure Box in any way, shape, or form. Uh, into Reality Rig Mark II or Mark III, which are probably green and red based on previous year's stuff. Usually you get like a blue holographic thing and you can upgrade it to green or red with a bunch of challenging stuff. Um, a new holographic hard light weapon set is now available. You'll receive your uh, uh, choice of a weapon by progressing the Super Adventure Box Nostalgia Meta Achievement, and you'll have a rare chance of finding additional tradable weapons in Super Loot Bags, available from a new daily achievement. A new partial weapon series, the Retro Forged Weapons, has been crafted by a visitor to Radisum. You can purchase these weapons directly from a festival vendor or find them as rare drops in Super Loot Bags. A new daily achievement, Extracurricular Activities, has been added. The achievement has been completed by besting, beating levels in the box or defeating champions in Tyria. The achievement rewards super loot bags containing helpful items for your adventures in and out of the box. The rotation of daily achievements for SAB has been reorganized to increase the variety of achievements appearing in different combinations. New Super Adventure Box themed guild decorations, ooh, have been added. Uh, it g give your hull the sky-high treatment with new cloud platforms. I, I, I look forward to seeing those around beetle races. Uh, Crimson Assassin tokens can now be traded for Bobble Bubbles. Super Adventure Box has been updated to no longer remove food utility and other positive effects on entry. The remaining time on those effects will be suspended for the duration of the Super Adventure and resume when you return to Tyria. That might be the best quality of life thing in here so far. Uh, that's awesome. Uh, so uh, in all previous years up until this point, when you would enter the Super Adventure Box to play in there, um, all buffs were stripped from you and you would need to redo them when you left. Uh, now they just pause in time. That's cool. That is cool. Um, Super Adventure Box vendors will now leave right as soon when the box closes. They will be available year round in the Scrit Cave in Lion's Arch. Oh, that's odd. Uh, so there's three of them that, are in, that up until this point have been in Radisum year-round. And you might be like, okay, well, what's the point of that? Well, one, if you had leftover materials from SAB, you could still go turn them in. And two, uh, if you've got the Bobble Home Instance node, you can get Bobbles every day of the year and then spend them there if you wish to do so. Uh, with, you know, even when the game is not there. Um, the updated the properties of moving objects such as rapids logs to reduce rapids related catastrophes and a number of SAB related bugs have been fixed to ensure a safe education for all heroes. Okay. Uh, a reminder, if it is your very first time to SAB and you don't know what you're doing, j just scream. Or, for the rest of you, there is a guide for that on MuckluckLabs.com. We've already got a guide for Super Adventure Box. All right. 
Uh, World Polish. Players can now retain up to five stacks of the Dragon's End Contributor effect by participating in the Battle of the Jade Sea meta event. Okay, wait, hold on. Uh, five stacks of Dragon's End Contributor effect. All players can obtain a stack of the effect when each of the three lanes escort event succeeds and a stack when the Quell the Branded Void Corruption event succeeds. Players can then obtain a fifth stack by participating and use the Crystallized Dragon Magic to charge Matching Prismatic Crystals event uh, if it succeeds for a total of five possible stacks. The number of events needed to increase the readiness levels in the central area of Dragon's End during the preparation since uh, central event has been reduced. Fixed a bug that... Okay, so... So possibly takes less time to get the event rolling now. Fixed a bug that could cause some of the purest agitators to travel outside of the event radius and thwart the purest agitators event in New Canaan. The Defeat the Purest Champion event in Old Kanang will now trigger after every successful completion of the Thwart the Purest Agitators event in New Kanang, rather than every five completions. To compensate, the Thwart the Purest Agitators event will trigger less often. Okay. Uh, adjusted the spawn conditions and locations in Dragon's End for the Looking Back collection achievement. Marjorie will now appear as long as the meta event is not actively running. The hint text for this achievement will be updated in a future release. All right. Uh, exposed. Now, we read, we, we covered this a bit the other day. However, I don't know if there's going to be additional info here that we don't already know, so I'm going to go over it again, um, and let's see if there's anything new. Also, thank you for the sub. I'll, I'll do the long welcome at the end. The exposed effect is applied when a creature's defiance bar is broken and causes the creature to take additional power and condition damage for short duration. Previously, there was no consistent duration for exposed. We are standardizing its applied duration to 10 seconds, which is longer than the previous durations. Except for, just to skip here because we read this last time, uh, Su Wan, uh, the final fight of Dragon's End, they uh, increased the duration on that specific fight because people were struggling with it. We increased duration. We're also adjusting the effect to compensate. So before, it was a very short window of time, maybe like five seconds or so, but it, again, it varied depending on the boss. And then it would be like, you know, you do way more damage during those few seconds. So now it'll be a longer duration, but less of a bonus. With uh, So let's see. Expose cause target to take 30% increased damage from strikes and 100% increase from conditions. The short window of exposed over rewarded certain builds with high burst capability and content such as fractals. Moving forward, Exposed will cause 10% increased damage from strikes and 20% from conditions over 10 seconds. This allows more time to take advantage of this window of opportunity while we are consistently rewarding a variety of builds. We will be keeping a very close eye on the effects of this change. This change does not affect the Exposed effect on Su-1. Uh, okay, so I don't think there's anything new there. Bug fixes. Oh god. Fixed incorrect progress text on the Crypt Seeker achievement. The Simple Minded achievement has been reworked to require throwing treasure maps at Naga looters instead of requiring throwing treasures at multiple Naga looters simultaneously. Uh, Hungry Hatchling in Dragon's End now correctly consumes the right fish. Fixed an issue with the Tsunami Dodger achievement that prevented progress from being awarded. Updated the description to clarify the requirements. Fixed a bug that prevented certain repeatable hero challenges from updating to be fully complete and caused the correct uh, content guide system to erroneously point to them. Added a pair of diving goggles and a diving achievement in Arborstone. Fixed elite specialization collection text to more accurately refer to a specific enemy group instead of a specific enemy type within a map. The thruster control... You know, I think this is the only one so far that I've actually seen. Um, oh, wow, Ruby. Okay. Uh, it's off the bottom of the screen, but there's been another post of uh, from Ruby uh, already. So uh, there was some of the collections I got. I was working on the specialization weapon collection for Mechanist, and there was some of the stuff I got, and I was like, I did not do the thing it says. And it was really confusing. So I'm guessing that's related to this. The thruster control unit has been moved to the Kanang Overlook Strike Mission Reward Chest. Wait, thruster control unit? Was that for the turtle? Hang on a sec. Uh, buh, 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 buh. Yeah, this is related to the turtle. So did, did you just automatically loot it before and now it's in the box? Okay. Okay. Um, buh, 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 buh. Let's see. Several PvP reward boxes have new icons. 
Beyon will no longer mistake Asura for Silvari at the end of the world tour. <laughs> that was insulting. Updated the hint involving the Tengu made bow in the character growth achievement. Minions will no longer be permanently knocked down if they are caught up in a shockwave in the only one chapter. Uh, several easily excitable Shrine Guardian Fox kits in Satan Province Nekavod Wilds are no longer in timeout for being overly playful with a group of adventurers. Okay. Jade Lanterns now have a new interact animation. A new but possibly familiar friend has appeared in Arborstone for those players with the Arborstone Revitalization Globalization Mastery. I'm there now, but I think I need to refresh my game. Resting is now effective in all of Arborstone, not just the M. Players staying or logging out from anywhere in Arborstone for at least four hours will get an experience bonus effect based on their Arborstone Revitalization Mastery progress. So, essentially, this is, uh, World of Warcraft has done this for years, but it's basically incentive to go to the safe area, and right now the only safe area in-game is Arborstone, and when you, uh, log out there and come back next time, like, if you log out there overnight, you will get a bonus to XP gain, which, uh, even for max level characters, that can get you more spirit shards faster. Asteri, thank you for the raid, buddy, I appreciate that. Uh, the type of objects made for assisting the Tengu crafters in the Mori Village Renowned Heart will now properly cycle through all of the daily options. Collecting all three ingredients for making the crafters objects in Mori Village Renowned Heart now will hopefully displays the location to take your full basket to the finished product. I've actually never done that. I got, I got to that heart and I started, I saw that, like, I picked up an item and it's like, all right, now you're going to use this and this and this and this and that. I just dropped it. I was like, I'm going to go kill those guys. <laughs> I was like, I, I, I'm going to go the flute girl approach. I choose violence. I do not wish to do basket weaving. Thank you for the offer. So I've actually never done this. Uh, the duration of the damage bonus effect granted when a player successfully returns to their body at the top of the platform during the final boss fight in the Battle for the JC meta event is now refilled once the boss returns to the platform after the phase completes. Okay, so we're getting uh, another quality of life bonus damage thing for that uh, for that fight. Updated the inventory icon for the speaker supplies gathered for an objective during the Bring Speaker Supplies to Stas event in Echovald Wilds to appear more distinct from the non-objective... <laughs> I was like, no-no objective? No-no objective rewards dropped by defeated speakers. Fixed a bug in which the Castrol Ariana would teleport during prevent both of the gangs from seizing control of the junkyard. She now stays in fights. Fixed an issue that prevented the Asura Gate to Lion's Arch instead of Arborstone from being unusable uh, upon training the base of operations tier of the Arborstone Revitalization Mastery Deck. Imagine that. You've got a portal to Lion's Arch and you upgrade Arborstone and it breaks. And they're just like, oh, thanks. Appreciate that upgrade. Fixed a bug in which Tatio and Trainer Saya were not reappearing after tra track down the missing Tengu Tatio. Uh, they now reappear consistently. Fix a bug in which the corrupted Moa and Echo Vault Wilds will get an incorrect amount of added boss abilities. <laughs> oh, it's just the Moa just appears behind you and it's like nothing personnel, kid. Oh my, Washington. Uh, fixed an issue which made a small number of Kirin and Echo Vault Wilds unintentionally hostile towards players by default. Made scaling adjustments to the enemies and stop Void Corruptors from tainting the Jade Shipment event in Dragon's End. That one I've experienced. That one I've experienced. There would be like these two sleds and you got to fill them up with Jade and one of them was easy to fill up and the other felt like impossible if you had more than like 10 people helping. So I've seen that one. Okay. Fractals. Thaumanova Reactor. The cooling chamber no longer burns player pets and it no longer causes mechs to be stuck in an infinite damage loop. Thanks. I haven't done Thalmanova since EOD came out, I don't think. Sunqua Peak. The Sorrowful Spellcaster's overlapping AoE effects will no longer kill player pets. Okay. Raids. The Catalyst Jade Sphere Energy is now set to maximum when engaging a raid or a strike boss. Just a few months ago, they did that for Druid uh, Fluids, uh, or you know, the Druid Astral Power, so doesn't surprise me. Um, personal Story. Updated the interior of the apartment complex in Broom Valley Alley in New Canaan to prevent it from automatically kicking players out in the chapter of the future in Jade and End of Dragons. Okay, added a pers an optional quest marker for June's office inside Young Reactor to increase visibility in the location in the chapter Deepest Secrets in End of Dragons. Fixed an issue in which players will automatically get dismounted when trying to mount if they were wielding Sohathan in the chapter Beast of War and Path of Fire. Items. The Elite Specialization Collection item earned from completing the End of Dragon story can now be earned from completing the Dragon's End meta event 
or purchase from Vendors and Dragon's End if you finish the story with another character. The text will be adjusted to reflect this change in a separate update. I see, Zon. Okay, so that's actually kind of big. So if you're playing one class, like if I'm playing Mechanist and then I decide for some insane reason that I want to play Virtuoso, I can, and I want to, and the, the Virtuoso Specialization Collection weapon requires you to do Dragon's End, I don't have to do it again. I can just go talk to a merchant because I've already done it on another tune. Uh, and done the story on another tune. So that's cool. Recipes for lower level potions of slaying have been adjusted. Weak recipes produce one potion. Minor produce two. Powerful produces ten. All other recipes produce three. Fixed a bug with Jadebot scavenger protocols. Scavenger protocols no longer work when killing players. No! It was a feature! Oh my god. Do you, do you know how satisfying it is to kill someone in PvP and then your Jadebot loots a bag of, like, totems and blood from their corpse. It makes sense. It makes sense to find blood on a dead player. Oh, man. Yeah, that was great. That was great. In World v. World and in Conquest, if you had the uh, Jadebot chip for uh, magic trophies, you would get some even when you kill players. This is what they took from you. Testimonies of Jade Heroics can be exchanged for testimonies of Desert Heroics at Heroics Notaries. Profession Skills Elementalist. Oh boy. All right. Once again, I don't know if they have added more since the previous video I did on this topic, so I'm going to take it from the top in case there is more information here. In our previous update, we addressed the fact that the Catalyst Pure DPS builds were simultaneously providing 100% quickness uptime for a party while doing among the highest damage output of any specialization in the game under certain circumstances. As other boon support builds that provide excellent uptime on critical boons, such as Quickness or Alacrity, have less damage, unless you play Firebrand, uh, output than builds po focused purely on damage, the Catalyst was at risk of supplanting all other Quickness providers in group content, unless you moved out of their Jade Sphere. We address this by making trait and damage output changes quickly to prevent it from distorting the cooperative play metagame. They nerfed it into the grave. However, it left the Catalyst damage builds not meeting our goals for the profession. It's difficult to play well and is only dealing competitive damage on large targets or when you can stand inside their hitbox, which means you die. That's not great. We want every profession and specialization to feel awesome regardless of the size of your enemy. Unless you play Druid. We've prepared a list of changes to specific skills and effects to help reach these goals for PvE play. None of the following changes apply to PvP or World v. World. Issue 1. Hammer 3's orbiting elemental missiles each give a beneficial passive effect while active, but the skill usage pattern required to keep uh, each one is very unforgiving. To address this, the duration of the elemental missiles and their effects in PvE are being increased from 5 to 15 seconds. So that's if, you, uh, if Catalyst has a hammer in hand, no matter what element they currently are, if they hit the 3 skill to get the orbiting thing, now it lasts 3 times as long. As before, activating a new one will refresh the timer on all of them. It's not only going to be easier to keep them all up all the time, we're also significantly increasing the passive benefits for having each one active, so keeping them all up is a rewarding goal. Rocky Loop and Icing Coil now increase, uh, sorry, now reduce incoming damage by three times more than they did, from five up to 15. Crescent Wind now gives an increased crit chance from seven to 10, and Flame Wheel now increases all of the damage you do from five to 10. Issue number two. Too much of the Catalyst damage is reliant on hitting as often as possible with Hammer 3's orbiting elemental missiles. This can make it hard to play consistently against small targets or in situations where you can't walk inside of your target's hitbox. To address this, the damage from Hammer 3's missiles is being dramatically reduced so that the Catalyst is not reliant on keeping them inside the enemy's hitbox for effective play. Instead, we've packed all of that removed damage and a lot more into other things you're currently that you're doing while they're up. The Hammer's a weighty weapon, so it should feel like it when you're crushing your enemies unless you play Untamed. All of your Hammer 1 and Hammer 2 skills will now do more damage per hit. Grand Finale does a lot more damage per missile too now, so once you have all your missiles from Hammer 3 out, you're ready to launch an attack worthy of that preparation. Um, something I mentioned the other day when we read part of these notes is that um, if the buffs from keeping these things, the uh, Hammer 3s orbiting you are so good and they reduce the damage of launching them at an enemy, I honestly wonder if the new meta thing to do is going to just be keep them spinning around you and never shoot them. Unless the enemy's like at one health. That's what I think might happen, but we will see. I'm going to let the math nerds at Snow Crows uh, figure that out. 
Uh, issue number three. The Shattering Ice utility skill is a powerful source of damage, but fully taking advantage of it requires you to hit a target every 0.25 seconds. Otherwise, you miss out on damage you could have gotten with the skill. To address this, we're increasing the interval on this effect from a quarter second to one second with a significantly increased damage. This makes it easier to reliably get the full damage possible out of this utility skill. Okay, so... Every single sentence here is in PvE only, I'm pretty sure. Uh, so, let's go. Singeing Strike, damage buffed dramatically. Surging Flames, damage buffed a bit. Stream Strike, tiny buff. Water Rush, tiny buff. Chilling Crack, tiny buff. Rain of Blows, tiny buff. Wind Slam, tiny buff. Hurricane of Pain, tiny buff. Stone Strike, tiny buff. Whirling Winds... Decent buff. Uh, flame Wheel, Icy Coil, Crescent Wind, Rocky Loop. Damage nerfed into the ground because that damage was moved somewhere else. Uh, Rocky Loop, the buff you get from it, the damage reduction increased from 5 to 15. Crescent Wind, crit Critical Strike Chance bonus uh, increased from 7 to 10. Icy Coil, damage reduction while active increased from 5 to 15. Flame Wheel, uh, damage and condition damage bonus while active increased from 5 to 10. Grand Finale, damage coefficient per missile increased from 0. 0.7 to 1.0. Yeah, I'm still wondering if it's going to be better just to let these spin around you and not ever fire them. We'll see. Uh, utilities, Shattering Ice, damage coefficient per strike increased from 0. 0.1 to 0. 0.6 in PvE only. Chill Duration increased from 0. 0.5 to 1 in PvE only. Interval between strikes on the same target increased from 0. 0.25 to 1. So... It, rather than 4 times per second, you could proc it once per second but it does six times the damage. So this will be much easier to use. Empowered Empowerment. PvP split removed. Effectiveness increased in PvP uh, change from 50% back to 100, which matches World v. World of PvP. Uh, Guardian. Oh my god, we're finally done reading Catalyst. Guardian. Will Bender. Searing Pact. Fixed a bug that caused this trait to reduce the duration of boons applied to... <laughs> you were doing half duration of boons? <laughs> ah, I shouldn't laugh. Fixed a bug that was causing you to reduce the duration of boons applied to allies by 50%. Yeah, Willbender, we're sabotaging the groups. Ranger, Juvenile Siege Turtle. Fixed an issue in which hunkered down would block the unblockable. <laughs> Yo, final phase of Slot the Sword has never been so easy. I don't understand why Siege Turtle is just like the hand of God stopping all the, the bullets. Revenant, Urn of St. Victor, updated underwater visual effects to be set a little further away from the character. Oh man, your skills work underwater? Must be nice. Tenacious Ruin, removed an unnecessary skill fact. Thank God. Thief, Siphon, fixed a bug that caused the incorrect cooldown to occur when targeting a fully defeated ally. Thieves Guild, this skill will now summon a specter if the player has that elite spec equipped. What? Oh god, I fear for PvP. Yo. Okay, so invisible specters are gonna come out of stealth with all their specter friends. <laughs> I'm scared. Alright, warrior. Blooming fire. Ammo recharge has been reduced from 25 to 10 in PvE. Artillery Slash, ammo recharge reduced from 35 to 15 in PvE. Cyclone Trigger, ammo recharge reduced from 40 to 20 in PvE. Break Step, ammo recharge reduced from 40 to 20 in PvP. Good God, all of these were half or more. Alright. Competitive Balance. Warrior. Winds of Disenchantment. Uh, really quick, Winds of Disenchantment is a spell breaker elite skill. It makes a giant bubble. It used to move with the warrior, now it's stationary. But it blocks all projectiles, and I believe it also starts ripping boons off of enemies. But it, it is one of the things that can make a warrior... Like, you could have a 40 versus 40 fight. Like, 40 versus 40. And if there's one spell breaker on one team and the other team doesn't have one... It drastically changes the fight in that team's advantage. Uh, it, it is it is one of those like tide turning skills in a big fight. 
We've gone through various iterations. Let's see, hold on. Uh, it has been a force in World v. World since it was first introduced. We've gone through various iterations since then, trying to find the right balance point with full boon denial, but it has continued to be a problematic effect. We've decided to finally split it to be a percentage of incoming boon duration rather than full denial. This is a major change to the skill's effectiveness, and we'll be keeping a close eye on its impact to see if any additional changes are needed to either Winds of Disenchantment or the Spellbreaker as a whole. Winds of Disenchantment reduce incoming boon duration uh, changed from 100% to... Th I read that wrong. Incoming boon duration reduction changed from 100% to 33 in World v. World only. Uh, with the big nerf to Winds of Disenchantment, we also wanted to include some effects to support the Spellbreaker build. Vigorous Shouts and Call of Valor are also being enhanced in PvP as we look to make Support Warrior more competitive with Guardian and Tempest support builds. Hammer also gets a slight tune-up, which increases some of its damage and reductions in crowd control cooldowns. Vigorous Shouts increased heal attribute scaling from 0.5 to 0.75, that's a 50% increase, in PvP only. Increased heal attribute scaling from 1.0 to 1.2 in Worldview World. Call of Valor, increased barrier attribute scaling from 0.82 to 1.2. Again, that's about a 50% increase. Increased barrier attribute scaling from 1.0 to 1.2 in World World only. Increased, num er, increased the number of conditions removed from 2 to 3 in both game modes. Fierce Blow, increased power efficient against non-controlled targets from 0.77 to 1.0 in PvP and World World. Hammer Shock increased power coefficient from 0.7 to 1.13. Oh my god. Uh, I, again, uh, that's more than a 50% buff. P and PvP World v. World. Staggering Blow reduced cooldown from 18 to 15 seconds in both. Backbreaker reduced cooldown from 25 to 20 in both. Hammer buffs? Uh, finally, we have a slight adjustment to Unyielding Dragon in PvP. The primary effects of this trait are already incredibly powerful, and the significant amount of might has pushed it a bit over the top. Hi, Muck. Glad to have your stream for lunch break. Glad to have you here for lunch break, Fortis. Thank you. Unyielding Dragon reduced the number of might stacks granted when converting flow into charges from 2 to 1 in PvP only. All right, so a little tweak to Bladesworn there. All right, Engineer. Scrapper is one of the premier support builds in World v. World, and it's one that's potent at too many things. I'm afraid where this is going. Scrapper brings strong healing and condition cleanse in addition to granting powerful effects like super speed and quickness and generating boons with purity of purpose, among other things. Yeah, it also gets zero loot. Because when you have a medkit equipped, you do zero damage. And if you do zero damage, you're not tagging things, and the way the World v. World loot system works is you have to do at least one damage to things to get loot from them. So you can play support Scrapper in World v. World for hours, and you get no loot except for the, the just the timer stuff. We, ha we see healing and cleanse as the main pieces of Scrapper's support identity, and while it will still grant super speed and quickness and other boons, we see its current output of these effects as too high. We do want Scrapper to be a capable healer, but it's currently a bit stronger than we like, so we're bringing down the healing of Medical Dispersion Field. Oh, dang. So, I can actually show that right now. So, Medical Dispersion Field is this right here. It's a Grandmaster trait, and what it does is... Now, I'm in PvE right now, so the numbers are different, but basically, when you get hit with a heal, a fraction of that heal is copied to five people around you. So, like, when you use your self-heal, let's say it heals you for, you know, 10k, that, that's a just a round number. Uh, let's say it heals you for 10k, it would heal the people around you in PvE for 5k. Um, so it's a very strong skill. And of course, you know, regen ticking on you is kind of lightly ticking on everyone around you, like everything. So it, it is, uh, usually if you look at like all your sources of healing, this ends up as the top thing very often. Um, mm -mm -mm -mm. so gyroscopic acceleration, reduce super speed duration by half. Speed of synergy, reduce super speed area of effect duration from five to three. Kinetic Accelerators reduce Quickness Duration by almost half. Medical Dispersion Field reduce Heal Share Percentage by almost half. Oh, thank you. Uh, Purity of Purpose 
increase the internal cooldown from two to three. God dang. Uh, that is that is painful. Mechanus has continued to overperform in PvP even after the nerfs it received in the last update, and we're making additional adjustments to the mech stat inheritance. Reduce Jade mech stat inheritance by 20% for all stats in PvP only. From what to what? What was it before? Oh, I have I I hate that they're changing it, and I hate that they're not saying what it was. Uh, okay. Well, we'll see how that goes. I gotta say, I think I I don't know this for a fact. I'm guessing Jade mechs are beating people up at the lower tiers of PvP. Nothing wrong with it. That's valid concern. At the higher end, it's uh, it, it is it is very challenging. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've peeked into Plat 1 a couple of times this season, and, uh, you know, Vindicator, Spectres, and Arbiters are, are, are running circles around the mech. Like, it's, it, the, the pathing is too, right? like, Skyhammer especially, the mech gets stuck on things constantly, and it just stays there forever until you move a mile away or blow your shift signet to uh, teleport it. Um, okay, I'm, 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 I'm surprised to hear this. We'll see what happens there. Uh, Guardian. Firebrand is another support build that is good at a few too many things. Yeah, for like many years. The main aspect that we want to bring down is its ability to heal allies, and for this update we've targeted its passive healing capability via Battle Presence. This will reduce the Firebrand's overall healing output while leaving Tome of Resolved as a higher impact healing option. Battle Presence. The following changes affect the Firebrand Elite spec only. Reduced pulse base heal from 84 to 42. It's a 50% nerf in World v. World. Reduced pulse heal attribute scaling by half in World v. World. In this update, we're shaving down the damage output from both Power Guardian and Rev in World v. World. Staff damage is something we've brought down previously, but it's still higher than we'd like to see on a weapon primarily designed for support. Test of Faith. Reduce pass-through strike power coefficient from 2.52 to 2.22 in, in World v. World. Procession of Blades. Increase cooldown from 20 to 25 in World v. World. Holy Strike. Reduce power coefficient from 0.91 to 0.73 in World v. World. Symbol of Swiftness. Reduce power coefficient from 0.3 to 0, uh, 0.25 in World v. World. Okay. Uh, Righteous Instincts has been a key piece of Power Guardian builds for as long as it's been in the game. Core Power Guardian currently sees average success in lower ranked play, but it hasn't been a major player in higher ranks or serious tournament games for quite a while. While we're looking at updates for Willbender, we floated the idea of enhancing Righteous Instincts and saw it as an interesting option. This is another change we'll be keeping a very close eye on to measure the impact and see if it's something that we need to reevaluate. Righteous Instincts increase bonus critical chance from 25 to 40% in PvP only. While the Righteous Instincts effect is potentially a big one for Willbender, we felt that there were a few other pieces that were worth adjusting. A longer immobilization on Advancing Strike gives Willbender slightly more potential to set up its own damage, and lower Virtue cooldowns solidify the specialization as a high mobility roamer. Advancing Strike increased the immobilized duration from 1 to 2 seconds in PvP World v. World. All of these are PvP World v. World. Lethal Tempo increased damage bonus, from uh, damage bonus per strike from 2 to 3%. Flowing Resolve reduced ammo recharge from 30 to 20 seconds. Increased the initial base heal by about fi by 780 to 30, more than 50%. Crashing Courage, reduce cooldown from 50 to 30. Roiling Light, reduce cooldown from 30 to 25. Heaven's Palm, reduce cooldown from 25 to 20. Mighty Blow, reduce cooldown from 8 to 6. Zealot's Embrace, increase power coefficient from 0.8 to 1.2. Ring of Wording, reduce cooldown from 30 to 25. So, a lot of Willbender buffs in PvP. We'll see what happens with that. Revenant. Inspiring Reinforcement is one of the main outliers in Revenant damage or world due to multiple attack regions allowing it to hit a large number of targets. We're looking into normalizing some of the target cap behavior for Inspiring Reinforcement and other similar skills, but for now we've just brought down the damage a bit more. Reduce the power coefficient from 1.0 to 0.75. 
Uh, Cap says, Mark, do you ever think that some of the things they nerf after are based on if they get beat by them or underperform them on their own? Mm-mm. I mean, I, I'm, I'm sure... <sighs> okay, so the question in chat was, do you think that they nerf things that beat up their thing? Um... No, I, I don't honestly believe that. Like... Most of the... Now, granted, it, 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 they've, they've got a lot of people that work at ArenaNet. Like, you know, I had the opportunity to raid with some of them uh, one time. And most of them are, you know, average players. They're not bad. They're not, like, amazing either. And then there's a couple of them, like uh, CMC, for example, that are very, very good mechanically. You know? They're, they're not going to just nerf something because it beat them up. They're, they're, what they'll probably do is look at data of thou collected over thousands upon thousands upon thousands of games and use that data to see what needs to be changed. Now, the thing is, they get to pick a direction. Like, right now, the direction they're going is they want Tempest and Guardian and uh, Warrior to be, you know, supports that work in PvP. They don't currently seem to care about the other supports. That's the direction they're choosing to go. So, that's the thing. Um, okay. Catalyst... Wait, did, is this just repeating? Catalyst is another one of the End of Dragon's elite specs to struggle to find its footing in competitive modes. Oh, this is PvP Catalyst. Hammers circling projectiles were difficult to chain together in realistic combat situations, and even when able to do so, the bonuses lacked impact. Increasing the duration should give more flexibility to maintain projectiles, which now also grants more rewarding bonuses. We've also enhanced a few other hammer skills, giving more damage potential to fire attunement and a bit more defenses to earth. In addition to the hammer adjustments, we've strengthened a few of the key skills and traits as a broader power-up to the specialization as a whole. Flame Wheel, so all of the following is in PvP and World versus World. Flame Wheel increased projectile duration from 5 to 8 seconds, increased damage bonus from 5 to 10. Increased projectile, okay, so really, so it looks like in PvE, the spinning, uh, the Hammer 3 stuff is 15 seconds now up from 5, and in PvP it's 8 up from 5. Um... Let's see, Icy Coil, Condition Damage Reduction from 5 to 10, Crescent Wind, Crit Chance from 7 to 12, Rocky Loop, uh, Damage Reduction goes from 5 to 10. Immutable Stone, Increase Base Barrier by double. Ground Pound, Reduce Cooldown by, from 30 to 25. Surging Flames, Increase Power Coefficient uh, by a little bit. Triple Sear, reduce cooldown from 20 to 15. Molten End, reduce cooldown from 25 to 20. Soothing Water, increase pulse healing from 1300 to 1500. Invigorating Air, reduce cooldown from 30 to 25. Fortified Earth, reduce cooldown from 30 to 25. Elemental Celerity, reduce cooldown from 90 to 60. Deploy Jade Sphere, reduce cooldown from 15 to 10. Energized Elements, increased energy gain from 2 to 3. Transmute Fire, Frost, Lightning, and Earth reduce cooldown from 10 to 3. Focus has long been the preferred offhand of the Elementalist as Dagger has generally failed to keep up with the power level of the game over many years. It's true. I mean, Focus on Ellie offers, like, just, just... It offers an invuln, I believe, with Earth. The air is, like, insane. The air has an anti-projectile field. It's the thing that looks like the big spinning wind, if you've ever seen it. Uh, it offers a almost instant cast, long-range, unblockable... Uh, knock I think it's 1,200 range knockdown. Uh, that's, like, two or three seconds long. The... I mean, just the, the air focus is insanely powerful in PvP. And that's not even counting, you know, the fire, earth, and the water parts of it. Um, we've tuned up a lot of the dagger skills with the goal of making it a more viable option. Ring of Fire. Increase power coefficient by a double. Uh, fire Grab. Reduce cooldown from 25 to 20. Frost Aura. Reduce cooldown from 30 to 25. Transmute Frost. Increase base heal by more than double. Increase heal attribute scaling from 0.5 to 0.8. Cleansing Wave. Increase the base heal from 1300 to 1800. Increased heal attribute scaling from 0.6 to 1.0. Increased conditions removed from 2 to 3. Earthquake, reduced cooldown from 30 seconds to 25. Ride the Lightning, reduced cooldown from 30 to 25. And Updraft, reduced cooldown from 40 to 30. 
<laughs> I feel like this is gonna be scary. So elementalist and warrior, uh, in my mind, they're both uh, in the same category. And what I mean by that is there's a, they're, they are hard to play well, but the people that play them well feel unstoppable. Like, I'm, I'm not the best player in the I think I'm good. I don't think I'm like top, top tier. But when I run into like the top tier uh, weavers and, and catalysts currently before this and spellbreakers, even if I get the opening hit on them, they will turn around and win the fight. Whereas other classes, I feel like if I get the opening hit, there's a very strong chance I'll win. Uh, but there's a huge difference between a very skilled Ellie and warrior and the, the not skilled ones. Right, like it has a it has, the skill ceiling goes very high on those classes. Uh, it can go very high. Um, so, so this combined with what I just said, I'm gonna be scared. <laughs> There's gonna be some scary ones. <coughs> All right, Mesmer, Virtuoso's dagger only brings damage to the table, but the numbers weren't very threatening, and they're getting increases across the board. Rounding out the Virtuoso's changes for this update is a set of cooldown reductions on some of its key defensive skills. Now, I, I want to remind everyone that what we're talking about right now is purely PvP and World v. World. Alright. Flying Cutter. Power coefficient increased from 0.28 to 0.35. Um, that's like a 30... No, that's like a 25% increase. Blade Call increased power coefficient from 0.4 to 0.5. Unstable Blade Storm increased large projectile power coefficient from 1.25 to 1.5. Increased small projectile power coefficient from 0.33 to 0.43. Blade Song Dissonance reduced cooldown from 30 to 20. Blade Song Requiem, 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 reduced cooldown from 30 to 20. I can never say that word. Blade Renewal reduced cooldown from 60 to 40. Psychic Force reduced cooldown from 40 to 30. Twin Blade Restoration reduced cooldown from 30 to 25 and increase the number of conditions removed from 1 to 2. I think they're going to be terrifying. I've already run into a couple of Virtuosos that were very, very scary, but they were really good at hit and runs. Like, they, they would hit, and if they didn't win the fight, they would retreat, restock things, and come in again. It, it was a, they, they played like an assassin. They wouldn't keep committing to a fight after they exhausted their resources, and they were very effective at that. Uh, this is going to make it a bit stronger. Um, Greatsword is another weapon we took a look at as we're reviewing possible enhancements for Virtuoso, and we saw this as a good chance to bring up some of its damage potential. I gotta say, just a quick personal note from me here, I kind of hate how, like, Untamed and Catalyst, yeah, you, you have to use a hammer. You have to! And then Virtuoso, they're like, and in case you want to, we're buffing Greatsword too. Love you guys. Call me. Uh, Mirror Blade increased the power coefficient from 0.6 to 0.75. Mind Stab increased power coefficient from 0.7 to 1. That's a big increase. Phenomenal, uh, fantas <laughs> Phenomenal Fantastic Phantasmal Berserker reduced cooldown from 20 to 15. Last up for Mesmer. We have a big cooldown reduction to Signet of Humility. Uh, this is another change we'll be keeping a close eye on to see if the cooldown is a bit too low or if the effect duration needs to be adjusted. But we do want to see players getting transformed into MOAs on a reg more regular basis. What? What do you mean? We want to see MOAs on a more regular basis in PvP? Reduce cooldown from 180 seconds to 90! They took a minute and a half off of it. Oh no. <laughs> Chat, it's time for all of us to finally sit down and learn our MOA rotations. We need to read those MOA buttons one through five and master the MOA abilities. Oh God, this is gonna be that war in Australia in every conquest map. Um, <clears throat> Necromancer. The following three skills were all dealing. Yeah, that's the thumbnail. It's just gonna be a Moa. Just like, like if I if I can find a picture of a pog champing Moa, that's the thumbnail. If you if you got this far, that wasn't the thumbnail. I couldn't find it. Necro. The following three skills were all dealing a bit too much damage when triggering the blight threshold bonuses. Okay, we're talking about Harbinger right now. 
And for this update, we decided to keep the big blight payoff and reduce the base damage to bring these skills in line. Elixir of Ambition. Reduce power coefficient from 1.5 to 0.9. Devouring Cut. Reduce power coefficient from 1.0 to 0.85. That's a much smaller nerf than the first thing. Voracious Arc. Reduce power coefficient from 1.4 to 1.0. I think Devouring Cut was the one that had like a small bug. Re this isn't the bug, but there was a bug with it recently where it was like it popped someone for like, you know, 13,000 damage from the water or something like that. Um, I think they already fixed that bug. And then this is an, an addition to that. Yeah. Yeah. Next video, low intensity MOA rotation. <laughs> and of course, it wouldn't quite feel like a balance update without enhancements to the Necromancer's axe. I, of course it wouldn't. Uh, I'll bet you they didn't turn it into a projectile, and now it obeys, pro you know, projectile block. Axe is a place to give Harbinger back some of its damage. Again, Harbinger, in case you don't like pistol, here's an axe on roids for you. They did, 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 the Hammer Boys, they didn't get this treatment. Uh, axe is a place to, 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 to see. Uh, give Harbinger back some of the damage it lost, while also giving a slight bump to Reaper, which has fallen off a bit. Following the changes from the end of Dragon's launch update. Uh, Ghastly Claws, reduce cooldown from 10 to 8. Unholy Feast, uh, now Ghastly Claws is the 2, it's the, it's the bursty one. It's the one where the axe spins like a buzzsaw and you take a ton of hits. Uh, Unholy Feast is the 3, it hits the whole area around you and tries to corrupt boons. Uh, reduce the power co, or sorry, increase the power coefficient from 1.0 to 1.3. Wow. Uh, Blackline Trading Company Gem Store. Bug fixes. Fixed an issue with the Crescent Canoe Skiff Skin in which the fishing party effect was sometimes lost depending on the player's position with the skiff. Thank God. You know, the funniest skiff thing I've seen so far is I saw someone put a clip on Twitter and they had their skiff part, like it was it was grounded. It was on the shore and they had some elite mob aggro them and they ran past their skiff and the mob started punching the skiff. And then the guy's like, wait, really? And then he turns around and very slowly... With dual pistols, he was a thief, whittles down this mob that was like gold border while it was punching the skiff. So skiff is actually a better tank than any mecha ranger pet. You heard it here. All right, so with that, Ruby has a reply. Let me update this. Oh my God. All right, late notes. End of Dragon's event rewards have been improved. Improved timing and flow for the bite attack sequence for the final boss and the battle for the Jade Sea meta event, which will allow for slightly more uptime on attacking the boss. Fix a bug in which the plants and special action skill in the Help Sang Chol Tend the Garden event in Seitung Harbor will function incorrectly and remain after the event finished. Fix a bug in which the toxicologist Yan would sometimes get stuck in an emote loop, preventing her event uh, chain from working properly in Seitung Province. Fix a bug in which the map and NPC markers were sometimes not showing up at the right times for the A Guardian Once More collection achievement. Fix a bug in which the spirit tethers were not attaching to the right places with defeat Tae Young and stop him from the harming the spirits event in Seitung Province. Fix a bug in which Lieutenant Francis used the wrong character model in Seitung Province. For some, when I read Lieutenant Francis, my brain immediately pulled up an image of Paladin Mike from Tiny Tina's Wonderland. And then I was like, wait, that's not Francis. End of Dragon's food consumables are now classified as meals within the crafting menu. Fixed an issue that could prevent the set hook skill from appearing when fishing if there was an obstacle between the player and the casting target. Fix the fire eels hint description in the Ring of Fire Fisher collection to indicate that it can now be caught at any time of day. Fix an issue in which the fishing alert reminder to set your hook was showing up on the compass map for other players. <laughs> Sounds annoying. <laughs> you're just minding your own business and just getting all these hooks. You're just like, ah, fisherman, stop. Uh, fix an issue that would cause the fishing party catches effect counter to disappear after 99 stacks. Fix the increase the drop rate of fish from stalwart fisher collection when fishing from nodes. Items. Tier 3 upgrades for Jadebot modules can now be purchased from Myunghee and Seitung Province in Zazzle and Arborstone. <laughs> so a lot of people have been like, Muck, when are you going to make a Jadebot guide? Here's my Jadebot guide. Go to the trading post. Buy a Tier 10 core, a Scavenger Protocol Magic Trophies, and whatever you want for the slot. It doesn't matter. And install them. 
you're done. Like and subscribe. Now you know how to do Jade Mods, you're welcome. None of that other stuff. A uh, cup of light roasted coffee no longer yields research notes. Research note output of some items has been adjusted. Third generation legendary weapon gifts now appropriately use the legendary name instead of the precursor name in their item text. For example, Gift of Orion's argument now displays instead of Gift of Dragon's argument. You know, this makes me wonder, um, do I still have the box? Um, ooh, someone made a mess in my bags. Who did it? Where is the precursor box? Um, the precursors still don't say they're precursors. Now, I've said it before, I'll say it again. A word of warning, my friends. If you get any of these items, dragons, something, and it's exotic, it might be a Gen 3 precursor. Um, be careful. Because Gen 1 and 2, I don't think say that. Uh, did you restart? Uh, we're at the end of the note, so I can go ahead and restart and get the patch now and see if anything if anything changes. So Noxy, I just got the I just downloaded the patch. Noxy said, "Get on my sky scale, fly up to the ceiling as high as I can go, then hold down the one key, which should land me and breathe fire." Search sky scale. They didn't even touch sky scales in this patch. How did they do this? Does it happen just when you hit one? No. When you're airborne and hit one? It's only when you go up to the ceiling. Okay, so it doesn't happen when you hit one. It doesn't happen when you're a foot off the ground. What if, what if I go like halfway up? I took fall damage. Okay, so basically, whatever the distance is that you descend, it's counting it as fall damage. Okay, what if, uh, hold on a sec. What if I get down to almost the ground, and then stop, and then go down the rest of the way? Really? It saved it? It's like, in case you forgot, you fell earlier. Octovine. The beginning of Octovine is hundreds of players flying down. They're all gonna die. They, it's just gonna be a horde of corpses descending. It's it's raining men. It's it's just going to be like let the bodies hit the floor is going to play at the beginning of Octovine. Oh my god. How did they even do that? Okay, 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 hold on. Next idea. Next idea. Give me a minute. Griffin. Griffin works. Alright, so the people that approach Octavine on a Griffin will be fine. It's just Skyscale. Oh, man. If you move on Skyscale before landing with Engage Scale, you take 90% of the damage and don't die. I've checked and it even happens if you fly down without pressing descent or one buttons and then press one. What if, hold on, hold on. What if I get off, uh, get off of the sky scale with Bond of Faith? That, okay, you're allowed to live if you Bond of Faith along. <laughs> New stuff, in the, okay, wow. New stuff in the store. All right, new stuff in the store. My, my add-ons are screaming right now. What do we got? Let's see. Elegant Canton outfit. Oh, that is very boost goose. Elegant Canton staff. Can't wait for Daredevil to beat me over the head with this thing. Uh, new Canton Cuckoo Springer mounts pack. <laughs> we got chunky burbs. Oh my gosh, these are going to be popular. Chunky burbs. 
Ah, uh, I like those. I like it. Please go to Router Summon a Car and talk to the Super Adventure Box Trader and preview Reality Rig MK2 Medium Chest on your car. Smile, thank me later. Oh my gosh, so many people here. Plush ass. Reality Rig Mark 2. Does it do something when you enter combat? Light armor. There's like a bl there's like blue wires in the armpits. Heavy. What's the point of it? Does it do something? Look in Discord. I tagged you. Okay, hang on. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> <laughs> Freaking long cat? Oh my god. <laughs> this is cursed. Oh. I, I, I like to believe that Char always had the ability to do this. They just decided to not until today. <laughs> oh lord, he coming. Dang boy, he long. That's wonderful. Oh, man. I, just, I feel like, it, it, because this was a is a Super Adventure Box thing, I thought the reality rig would, like, light up or something. Okay, there's a little bit of lights on this one. Uh, I'm, I'm a little disappointed in the reality rig. I thought it would do something more than that. Oh, there he is. Sparkling Stone. Show me your wares. Okay, so Sparkling Stone has a few new things. Uh, what do we got? Retro Hammer. Oh, that, that's so weird on the eyes. It, like, blurs occasionally. That is so weird on the eyes. Retro Forged Shortbow. And Retro Forged Spear Gun. Yes, for when I go underwater without my mech! Has anything changed? In addition to the usual cleanup and retuning, this year I was able to adjust the box's response to external consumables. This should make the box more user-friendly than ever. I'm really hoping for a new level one year. I know that waiting can be hard, but I want you and other fans of the box to know that I'm striving to meet those hopes. Thanks, Moto. I'll keep believing. His face makes me think of the Who's that Lynn Whoville. Just an observation. Check your in-game DMs. Super loot bag. What have we got? Holographic cheese, deluxe gearbox, super drumstick, super apple, super cake, furniture coin, continue coin, bobble, retroforged weapon chest. Only three options. Uh, bobble bubble. Rare. Hard light weapons. Why is it sideways? Why is it upside down? Oh, that's the Warhorn. I thought that was the mace. Okay, that threw me off. Uh, torch. Sword. Staff. Oh, they leave lines behind them, too. Hi, Chip. Uh, short bow. Shield. Okay, I might want that shield on my engineer. Although it kind of looks like a credit card. Uh, scepter. Rifle. Pistol. I gotta say, this this stuff I think would go very, it'd be very in character for a hollow smith since they're all about using the hard light stuff. Uh, mace. Bow. Longbow. Hammer. Great sword. Focus. Oh, that looks really neat. I dig it. I dig it. I like the focus. I mean, on a scale of one to binding of Ippos, it's like a five, but most of the other focuses on one to binding Ippos are like a one. Uh, dagger. And axe. 
Very cool. And those are from the Super Loot Bag. And they are tradable, so we'll probably see them on the trading post soon. I'm super confused. I've never seen this festival. Uh, Cyroxes, if you... Let's see, is it uh, festivals? So right here on this page, if you need it, uh, Super Adventure Box. So uh, that link I just put in the Twitch chat, scroll down a little. I've got a guide for the Super Adventure Box right there that gives you a brief rundown on how it works. All right, so in the Black Lion chest, we've got the Draconic set, which has been around for a while. Uh, the Equinox set, which is gorgeous, but has also been around for a while. Uh, so I'm, I'm not going to go into that right now. Uh, the fancy rare-ish things is Blood Flame Sword Skin, which is this right here. They've got curved swords. And the Winged Reverie Skiff Skin. Oh, dude, I like that. I don't even like skiffs and I like this. They're trying to trick me into liking skiffs. That's pretty cool. I mean, I think the visibility looks like it'd be, <laughs> it'd be really hard to drive it. Like, I can't see! Just smashing into everything, but this looks pretty cool. It does. So just imagine, like, the boat maker. Like, alright, your boat's done. Add more sails. Where? Yes. <laughs> some over here, some over here. Make it look like it's got a sail goatee, some sail sideburns. He's like, what? What? It's just, yeah, it also, completely blind me, if you can. It just, mwah, it's gonna look so good. All right, you know that's a sail in the back. That's not gonna help. Three of them. Three of them? <laughs> I want any gust of wind to lift me up and I want to fly. Okay, 